Welcome to Magal Science. I'm Dr. Schnobel. And I'm Dr. Eyes. Today we'll explain the helium balloon mystery. If you haven't seen it, click on the link to watch. Let us first remind you of the mystery itself. To Dr. Eyes' great surprise, we discovered that when the car accelerates, the helium balloon tied inside moves towards the front. And when the car slows down, it moves to the back. I was shocked! Today we'll try to explain this mysterious result. But first, let's figure out, why do helium balloons float up in the first place? We will perform a thought experiment. It uses mind as our laboratory. Presume we enclose the volume of air with a very light balloon, so light indeed that its weight can be ignored. The balloon will remain suspended, just like the air inside before we enclosed it. But if we somehow removed all the air from around the balloon, the force of gravity from the Earth would cause the balloon to fall down, similar to all objects. This doesn't happen in air because, in accordance with Newton's laws, in addition to gravity, there is an opposite force acting on the balloon from the air, called a buoyant force. The great Archimedes formulated the buoyant force as follows. A body submerged in a liquid or gas, such as air, is acted upon by a buoyant force and its magnitude is equal to the weight of the displaced liquid or gas. Indeed, in our experiment, the gravity force equals the weight of air inside the balloon. But because the balloon stays at rest, gravity and the buoyant force must cancel each other. So the buoyant force of the air equals its weight in the balloon's volume. Now, if we replace the air in the balloon with a much lighter helium, the buoyant force from the air will remain the same. But the force of gravity will become much smaller because helium is lighter than air. The balance will be broken and the balloon will float up. Okay, that makes sense. But what causes buoyant force? Great question. If I take a marble and throw it at a balloon, it will give a balloon a little push. If I take a bunch of marbles and throw them at the balloon, the push on it is much stronger. The same happens with air. Air molecules are constantly bombarding the balloon. Since gravity attracts air molecules down, there are a bit more molecules under the balloon than on top of it, and they move a bit faster. When we add up all the little pushes from all the molecules, we end up with a buoyant force. That's neat, but what does it have to do with our balloon mystery? Well, have you heard of inertia? Yes, it means you have to apply force to change somebody's rate and the direction of movement. Precisely. Because air molecules need force to change their combined speed, they will fall behind the accelerating car, causing air to pile up at the back wall when the car speeds up. So the molecules are piled up on the bottom of the car because of gravity, and at the back of the car because of car acceleration and air inertia. As a result, the direction of the buoyant force changes and the balloon moves towards the front. Brilliant! And the opposite happens when the car slows down. The molecules are piled up on the bottom of the car because of gravity, but at the front of the car because of car deceleration and air inertia. As a result, the direction of the buoyant force changes and the balloon moves towards the back. Okay, I get it! Inertia causes air to pile up, changing the direction of the buoyant force. Splendid!